The trouble with steam pumps, part one. Some of the problems that I find with them. This is the smallest steam pump in my modest collection. I'm going to connect it to my recently completed Stuart 504 boiler. This is a piece of 532nd or 4mm copper tubing and I need to silver solder quarter by 40 threads per inch unions on the end to connect the pump to the boiler. Here's the pipe connected to the displacement lubricator on the pump and here I'm connecting the other end to the smallest tap on the turret. The water gauge is showing that there is more than sufficient water in the boiler so I can light the burner. And while I'm waiting for the temperature to rise I can pump some more water in anyway. But the first thing to do is to refill the displacement lubricator on the pump. I filled the lubricator using steam cylinder oil which is very thick and clingy, which very much reminds me of a girlfriend I once had. In no time at all, this boiler raises steam very quickly, there's 40 pounds per square inch of pressure inside the boiler. It's time to open the valve and see what happens to the pump. and it runs perfectly. The pool of water that you can see around the base of the pump is just the condensate because when the pump was cold the first steam to enter it turned to water immediately, hence the water. With the tap open fully the pump goes very fast and as I start to shut the tap the pump slows down. If I shut the tap all the way the pump will stop. And often the best way to regulate the speed of these small pumps is to fit a tap on the water outlet rather than on the steam inlet. And that means the pump will remain hot at all times, so you don't get the condensation problem. This is a very early version of the pumps that Don English makes. And it has two exhaust outlets and they're not into a collector, so the steam goes everywhere. Don's built a lot of these pumps and on later models there was an exhaust collector, which was a bit better. In this clip I've got the valve fully open and I've connected a piece of silicone rubber tubing from the outlet on the pipe to the inlet of the water gauge's blowdown valve. And this pump seems to have insufficient power to pump water into the boiler against the pressure of the steam in the boiler. If I help it along with my finger at each end of the stroke it works okay, so maybe I could alter the valve. As I mentioned earlier though, this is a very early version of the pump and it was built specifically for this test rig for Blackgate's engineering. When I put it back to how it was built, just to pump water around a circuit, it seems to do that very well. But I am thinking that if I make a smaller and slightly different version of the valve, then it should be able to pump the water into the boiler with no trouble at all. I'll probably have a go at that later on in this series. For now though, I'm going to disconnect it and put it back on the shelf. In this clip, as you can see, I am disconnecting it from the turret and this is very hot indeed. I actually burnt my fingers, which is unusual. Here is a much larger version of the pump, also built by Don English, and it's quite an old design. In fact, it's exactly the same design as the very small one. A few years ago, I had a boiler, and this pump sat next to it and used to pump water into the boiler with no problem, although it was a little bit erratic. And before anybody writes in, I do not recommend doing this. But sometimes on these pumps, it's what is required to just dislodge the shuttle piston, but in this case, no. And needless to say, you do not hit it very hard. This pump has a mechanical lubricator, one of Don's own designs. I like these pumps a lot. They are not rotary devices. The shaft just rocks back and forth, and a cam depresses a plunger, which pumps the oil. But they can be quite tricky to set, because to get the oil flow right, the cam and the plunger have to be in exactly the right position to pump the correct amount of steam oil for any specific application. Once the pumps are set up, they work perfectly. This pump's been sat on the shelf for about three years and it's quite dirty. Maybe I should renovate it and paint it, but I won't for the moment. I'm going to fix the problem with it first. First of all, I remove the top cover of the shuttle piston cylinder. In case you're wondering why this pump is so dirty, it's because it was used to feed water into a coal-fired boiler, which generally are very dirty things. It looks like the shuttle piston is firmly stuck at the bottom. I'm using my airline to blow away the oil in the top part of the cylinder. This next part of the design is quite useful. The top part of the shuttle piston has a 6BA threaded hole in it, and I've screwed in a 6BA bolt, and as you can see, it's very sticky. I had to lever the bolt up with a screwdriver. 
And just in case any viewers are wondering why I don't just pull out the shuttle piston, well you can't, because the centre part of it is relieved and operates a slide valve inside the chamber. I think I'll try a little bit of steam oil and see if this makes things better. The shuttle piston will be fitted with some silicone o-rings and it's a good idea not to use any other oil but steam oil in a shuttle piston on this type of pump because some oils will make the shuttle pistons and o-rings become very sticky. In this clip I'm refitting the top cap of the shuttle piston block and I'm going to try it on steam one more time. First I'll open the valve on the boiler and as you can see the main piston rod starts to ascend. This is encouraging because it didn't do that before. Previously the shuttle valve was stuck at the bottom of the cylinder and now because the piston is at the top the shuttle valve is stuck at the top of the shuttle valve cylinder. Time for a gentle tap with the hammer and no this is doing nothing. I think I'll try tapping the slide valve with my spanner and this does something it just makes steam come out of the exhaust pipe but there's not much movement going on in the pump itself. In this clip you may be thinking why am I sticking my left hand in the tub of water to the left of the engine. That's because when steam pumps or steam engines run on steam they get very hot and I forgot this after all these years and when I touched the engine not surprisingly I burnt my finger. I think it's time to give this up as a bad job for this video. I've turned the burner off underneath the boiler. I've disconnected the steam pipe from the pump and now I'm going to try it using compressed air. I'm giving the pump a bit of a clean in this clip because the gland of the valve rod is leaking slightly. I've turned the valve into the on position on the compressor and I now have about 50 pounds per square inch of compressed air which I'm applying to the steam chest. And guess what? And it works perfectly using compressed air. So why is this? It won't run on steam, yet it runs on air. And also it will pump a lot of water as you can see here. I know from experience that this pump pumps water into the boiler against boiler pressure. It's a very good pump. It has a water bypass system simply because when I had it connected to an old coal fired boiler it used to overfill it in no time at all. But by using a bypass valve on it like this I could limit the amount of water that it pumped into the boiler. The rest of the water was returned to the tank. This is just about the end of this episode but I haven't finished with this pump. In the next episode you will see me take it apart to fix it, which you may find interesting. In the meantime make sure that you stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.